I'm at a restaurant and I'm telling this guy, hey, you should come to the May game. He's like, wow, well, why should I come watch you guys play? He's like, can you jump as high as LeBron? I'm like, no. He's like, can you run as fast as LeBron? I said, no. He's like, well, why should I come to watch you? I said, I run faster and I jump higher than you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The WNBA has an undeniable place in the history of sports glory and activism. However, the best women's professional basketball league in the world still fights for the attention, popularity, and respect they deserve. Now, some of the resistance is twofold. The majority of those women are black, putting the league at the crossroads of combating both sexism and racism. Let's keep it real. WNBA players have put their money where their mouth is and once again stand at the front lines fighting for justice and equality. I am here with three esteemed women, excellent hoopers and athletes. Um, I have three-time Olympic gold medalist, four-time WNBA champion with the Houston Comets, Cheryl Swoops. Now we take it to another excellent woman herself. We have two-time Olympic gold medalist, five-time WNBA All-Star, newly of the Las Vegas Aces. Angel McCautry is here as well. What's up, Angel? And finally, one of the up-and-coming young stars of the league, uh, 2018 first-round draft pick, Lexi Brown of the Minnesota Lynx is with us. Let's keep it real about how the national media covers WNBA players. Angel, Lexi, how do you feel the WNBA does as far as marketing its players. I still remember, I want, I want to go back. I still remember that episode, you guys were on Martin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that was the best thing ever, <laughs> you know, because he was yeah. actually challenging Gina. He was saying, well, women can't do what men can do. And then she brings these WNBA players on. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was the best thing ever, you know, for us to see growing up. And to add on to that, yeah, you know, people don't know LeBron personally, but they know LeBron. Does that, make, does that make sense? So if someone mm -hmm. doesn't know Lexi Brown or Angel McCautry, why are they going to come to the game? They don't know who they're watching. You know, our commercials are only on when we have a game. Yep. And then people mm -hmm. don't even know when we have mm -hmm. a game, you know? <laughs> but you can see an NBA commercial uh, during the, when you're watching, you know, primetime TV. You know what I mean? And I think, too, I think some of the NBA players can grab some of us and say, hey, have, I want Lexi in the State Farm commercial with me. They need to get to know who she is as well. So I think, uh, you know, hand in hand, we can all work together to get some more of these girls known. Yeah, we know Diana Taurasi, we know Sue Bird, but they should know Lexi Brown. You know what I mean? So I think we can do a better job of that. You know, I definitely think, you know, MVPs and star players have gotten promoted. Um, you know, Cheryl, you, Cynthia Cooper, I mean, wow, I knew everything about you. C growing up in New York, I knew Teresa Weatherspoon. Candace Parker. I mean, I'm a big Cappy Pondexter fan, but maybe you're talking to somebody who is a little biased because I am an actual women's basketball fan. You talking about the casual fan. How do we mm -hmm. get them in line with knowing everybody? And I remember, you know, networks like ESPN did things like uh, the three to see with Skylar Diggins and Brittany Griner and Elena Deladon. And it was just about the top players. But I yeah. think, I think, how do you get to that next level? Maybe like with you, Lexi, as someone who's a star, but young and coming up, right. we learn more about your story, um, the way we might know about a role player on an NBA team. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. I think partly I want to put it to you. Do you, do you think that all the stories around women's sports, a lot of times they tend to be good girl stories, all good news, all positive. <laughs> Do you think the league could benefit if we had more real, honest characterizations of who the personalities and players were in this league and they weren't all they were great girls? Yeah. I'm coming from college, but two, three years now, I mean, it's the same in college. You know, the three few top players, they all look the same. They might not even be the best players in our opinion, but they all look alike. There's a certain look that I think people try to push out on people. And I I think that our league has the most colorful personalities, like from top to bottom. And the beautiful thing about our league is that there's not a lot of us. So we really all do really know each other pretty well. Um, there's a lot of stories that have to be shared. And just because they're real, it doesn't mean they have to be tragic or sad. They just have to be real. And everything doesn't have to be you know, a good girl story, like you said. And I think that this younger group of WNBA players have kind of tried to 
take it into their own hands, you know, using social media and their followings and things like that. Um, and I've personally noticed that even sometimes when we reach out to the lead, you know, oh, we have this idea. They, they turn us, they turn it away. They don't want it. They don't have anything to do with it. Um, so that kind of forced us to all kind of go our separate ways and find our little fan groups, separate, separate, separate. And my angel said, when you go out somewhere and they see that you're a, a professional basketball player, they get super interested, super interested. And then you tell them that you, you attended Louisville, you attended Duke, then, oh my gosh, like people lose their minds. So um, there are so many stories to tell. You know, it's hard to work really hard at something and it's like, man, does, it, does anybody notice that I work this hard? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have an ice cream shop here in Atlanta. And actually, Candy and Todd, Candy Boris from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, she was the owner of the building. So I rented from her, which was awesome. So um, Todd, you know, is her husband. So they were doing a mural out back, okay? They're putting, I go out back to look at the mural. They're putting all the sports team logos on this mural. So I asked the guy, I said, so where's the Dream logo gonna be? He's like, Dream? What is that? I was wow. like, the W? He's like, uh. Wow. <laughs> he's like, I don't know nothing about that. Wow. So I was like, Todd. I said, the mural outside is dope. I said, you just one thing. He's like, what? He couldn't remember. What did I forget? What did I forget? I said, Todd, the WBA logo. We are the only women's professional sports team in the city. You forgot about us? He's like, oh my wow. God, my bad, my bad. I rent from you. You come to my ice cream shop every day. We're friends. And you forgot <laughs> to put the only women's professional team logo on this mural. So I have to send you guys a picture of the mural. If you look at it now, we're at the top <laughs> of the mural. <laughs> but the fact that I had to fight for that, how do you forget? I have another story for y'all real quick. I'm at the NBA Awards. <laughs> and, you know, PR says, come over and, you know, do some interviews. I come over to do like the line on the red carpet. And they're all like, and I'm like, hey, excuse me, we, we want the players. I was like, oh. So I walked to the next person. They was like, excuse me, we're waiting for the players. I'm a player. I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist, really? Like, I went down that whole red carpet line. Nobody looked at me twice. Everybody was just like this. And I felt kind of belittled. It was just like, that's what you guys really think of us. Like, nothing. yeah, I wasn't even considered a player. So those are the things that, that definitely have to change. Like, and if we're marketing, it's like, oh, that's Angel McCarthy. Okay, cool. So how, what do you feel about being in the NBA? Like, give me one question like that. You know what I mean? That would have been cool. Let's keep it real about how mainstream media and entertainment treats WNBA players. It's not just that the WNBA has to market you better for those just unfortunate situations to happen to an athlete and someone who's as excellent as you are literally a face and star of the league because it's not it's I mean sports reporters people who cover sports will say things like the first pro championship to ever come yes. to Seattle oh my or God, something that and you're like well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about the Seattle storm mm -hmm. and you see it over and over wow. and we have I feel like every year there's a correction of a professional sports broadcaster with credibility dismissing the credits of a WNBA championship. Well, I, I was, I was going to say, so the, the other part of that too is even as, and I'm not saying you, because I don't think you really do it, but even as, as commentators, as broadcasters, as analysts, when you're watching games, right? Like you're watching college games or even WNBA games, we compare girls to boys all the time. When you're watching college games, you'll say, oh, so-and-so reminds me of Kevin Durant or Steph Curry or James Harden. No, she reminds you of Angel McCautry or Lexi Brown or Candace Parker or, do you know what I mean? So like, we, we'll talk about what everyone else is not doing to promote the league and help us grow the game, but we don't help ourselves grow the game. I hear that a lot, um, and the, the strategy there is trying to capture that casual fan who might know the NBA player more than the WNBA player and kind of create some kind of uh, connection. But I've often felt that women's basketball shouldn't be compared to men's basketball 
because they are separate and different games and also businesses. Lexi, I'll take it to you. When we talk about women's basketball, should it be compared to men's basketball in your opinion? Well, I know when I was younger, there was, there was a point where I was looking up to NBA players. And then when my dad got into coaching in the WNBA, that he kind of shut all that down. He was like, nah, you gonna, <laughs> you're going to model your game after all these players. So um, even through middle school and high school, um, my favorite player was Christy Tolliver. I loved her at Maryland. She was the reason why I committed to Maryland. Um, I basically modeled my entire game after her up until I got to college, like honestly. Um, well, I do agree with when people say that they're trying to capture the casual fan, compare it to an NBA player. I do understand that, but I feel that at this point, like we're trying so hard to capture so many casual fans. We just need to find, we just need to capture new, like a new fan. And maybe mentioning a WNBA player will have them, oh, I wonder who that is. They'll go look up the WNBA player and discover this whole league full of amazing women that can poop their asses off. So um, I am guilty of, of comparing people to NBA players, definitely. But as I've gotten older, um, gotten to know these players, paid a little bit more attention, you know, I'm able to compare a lot of players to, to WNBA players instead. Let's keep it real about how society views and treats black female professional athletes. Sometimes public criticism and jokes that we see that are happening culturally in society and even on popular cultural places like television shows like Family Guy or Blackish, which is a show about uplifting black culture. And here you are cracking jokes on a woman's league that is predominantly black, but don't get me started. And we, I'm a fan of the show, but it was disappointing to see those right. kind of jokes. And it continues um, to permeate that it's okay to make fun of a league of excellent women. Um, so first, I've, I want to ask, does it hurt when you see that? I have one last Not as much as it used to. Not as much as it used to. <laughs> you look at the people who are making these comments and you're like, now I'm just like, they must be jealous or something. I've just, mm -hmm. it's, it's been hard for me to understand men's, men specifically, why they have such a problem with women being good at anything. Not even just sports, just anything. <laughs> It's weird. I can't figure it out. I can't wrap my mind around it. Like men can be good at things and women can be good at things. Like it's it's that simple. Um, but the jokes are played out. I will say they haven't been. Uh, okay. They haven't come up with anything new. That been fun. <laughs> the same jokes. <laughs> so from a page with an egg as a icon. So I'm just like. I mean, we must be doing something right because people are, are upset at how how amazing and successful we are. I like how you put that. I like how you put that. I had one last night, Lexi. Guys, I'm, I was saying how we great start playing. Our season's going to start at the end of July. And I was like, it's going to be weird not having no fans. I'm like, oh, that's why I didn't even say nothing about yeah, that. Yeah, I was like. I'm gonna have to pump myself up and look at the stands and be like, woo, if I get an M1 or something. Like, the guy, this old guy is like, well, you should be used to that. Oh my, oh. See, like, I was like, oh wow. He's like, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, 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 no. That's the other thing. They say something crazy and you're like, you know what, F off. Right. And then they'll, they'll, they'll message, this happens to me all the time. They'll either message me or tweet me later. Oh no, I was just playing, I'm a huge fan. Like, I, I, I love, I love the Derby. No. You just, no. I'm just convinced that people just want a reaction out of people because they're bored and sometimes we give it to them. It's easy to sit behind, you know, your phone or a computer or something and, and, and run your mouth, right? right? It's easy to do that. But if you've met that person or saw that person in the store or on the street or whatever, they're not going to say anything. To me, some of the comments that I read on social media, like, honestly, I laugh at them because I'm like, like, really? Like, this is so stupid that you have to laugh at it. Now, I will say for me personally, and I don't play anymore, but for some of the things like Blackish, right? When I when I see that, I'm like, really? Like that, I don't feel like that that hurt me personally, but it hurt us. Like I, I think that hurts the game when we're still trying to grow the game and we're still trying to 
to get fans and talk to people about how, how incredible these women are, not just basketball, but how incredible these women are. And then a show like Blackish, right? That's what's funny to me, um, is you, you want to, to make fun and, and poke at, at who we are and, and at our game. That's, that's the part that drives me crazy. I could care less what some of these assholes have to say on social media. Here's the thing, they want to compare us to greats. They're comparing us to men who, like, for example, I'm at a restaurant and I'm telling this guy, hey, you should come to the Mega. And he's like, wow, well, why should I come watch you guys play? He's like, can you jump as high as LeBron? I'm like, no. He's like, can you run as fast as LeBron? I said, no. He's like, well, why should I come to watch you? I said, I run faster and I jump higher than you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm like, they're like, they're yeah. not, you guys are not as good as LeBron. Well, is anybody, well, you anybody, anybody you? Okay? Nobody in the NBA is better than LeBron. Are you? And you can't even compare to me. So why would you say that? You know what I mean? Like, so he kind of got quiet. I thought he's like, ah, but just the fact that you're comparing me to a freak of nature LeBron, but you can't even compare yourself to me, but you're knocking me, a woman. You know what I mean? Who's doing incredible things in life and playing a sport. And that's why I want to, I want to dig deep. And I asked my male friends, I'm like, when you guys were younger, were you taught, what were you taught about women? That women couldn't do anything or they were like, no, we were just taught, you know, just be easy on girls, they, you know, not too rough. But I'm like, nobody ever taught you to knock a woman in the sport. They were like, no. So where does it come from? Is it a right. taught behavior? To me, it feels like it's like racism. It's like a form of race. It's a taught hate, you know?